Assalamu alaikum. In this video, we are going to discuss about angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, a very important class in the pharmacology of cardiovascular system or cardiovascular pharmacology. So, they are commonly known as ACEI ACE inhibitors. Okay, so the normal physiology or the normal process in the body is takes place something like this. Consider this flow chart which uh, I am going to mention over here like we are having angiotensinogen which is converted into angiotensin 1 by the enzyme renin then angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by the enzyme of ACE angiotensin converting enzyme then angiotensin 2 with the help of adrenal gland it converted into the angiotensin 3 so angiotensinogen about uh, the detail of the angiotensinogen is synthesized by the liver which is then taken up by the blood stream so whenever the blood pressure falls down or uh, drop below the level of the normal levels so angiotensinogen which is synthesized by the liver is transferred to the blood stream and this angiotensinogen is flowing throughout the blood stream and reaches ultimately to other bodily organ like we are having lungs and the kidneys in the blood stream and the enzyme renin which is produced by the kidneys is responsible for conversion of angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 this angiotensin 1 has no as such pharmacological action uh, physiological action but it, it is considered to be the precursor of the angiotensin 2 so angiotensin 1 when reaches to the lungs there is an enzyme known as ACE which is then converted into angiotensin 2 which is a potent vasoconstrictor and which causes sodium retention so this angiotensin 2 further taken up by the angiotensin 3 uh, which causes aldosterone secretion on other hand there is another pathway which is governed by the ACE, ACE angiotensin converting enzyme that is known as Kelly-Crane kinin system so on the other hand kininogen is a protein or in, uh, which is taken up by the Kelly-Crane and convert it into the bradykinin so upon bradykinin ACE act and it converts into the inactive metabolite so metabolism of the bradykinin takes place in the lungs as well with the presence of the enzyme so what bradykinin actually does and normally it causes prostaglandin synthesis this prostaglandin synthesis is responsible for vasodilation this vasodilation causes decreased peripheral vascular resistance thereby decreasing the blood pressure so this is the normal process which is taken up if the bradykinin remains but ACE converts, ACE metabolizes this bradykinin so there is no decrease in blood pressure by the release of the nitric oxide I hope this makes sense so this is an important point so what ACE do it converts bradykinin to inactive metabolites so there is no vasodilation and there is no decrease in the blood pressure this was the normal blood pressure and this was the normal mechanisms by which ACE works so now when angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors uh, class of the drug is given or administered what this drug or the group of the drug do is it has like we are having two mechanisms as I discussed earlier so it primarily inhibits the enzyme ACE it causing causes the blockage of ACE by two pathways and the second one is the bradykinin system uh, bradykinin pathway so there will be no metabolism of the bradykinin takes place with the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors though so the first one is as discussed earlier I am writing again so angiotensinogen with the presence of the renin it's converted into angiotensin 1 this angiotensin 1 with the presence of the catalyzing enzyme ACE is converted into angiotensin 2 so this angiotensin 2 is responsible for vasoconstriction this is the important point which you have to remember this vasoconstriction causes increased peripheral vascular resistance so increased peripheral vascular resistance always causes increased blood pressure on other hand it causes aldosterone secretion which causes aldosterone secretion leads to increased sodium and water level or retention inside the body so these two 
ultimately leads to increased blood pressure this is the normal process by which as works so when angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are the drug class or the pharmacological class such that captopril is given it block ACE so it inhibits the ACE so when there is a blockade of the ACE so there is no conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 and if there is no angiotensin 2 so there will be no vasoconstriction no aldosterone secretion so ultimately the net result is decreased blood pressure I hope this makes sense okay this was the first mechanism on other hand we are having second mechanism that was on the bradykinin metabolism so it is known as kinenogen the protein which is taken up by the enzyme calicrine is converted into bradykinin and bradykinin is upon bradykinin is worse and it causes inactive metabolites so bradykinin inactive metabolites so we are having two main mediators over here so normally metabolism of bradykinin takes place and there will be no decrease in the blood pressure so so in increased blood pressure we need this bradykinin to remain inside the body so vasodilation should be takes should take place so when ACE inhibitors are given it causes uh, sorry yeah, when ACE inhibitors are given it causes blockade of the enzyme ACE so there will be no conversion of the bradykinin into inactive metabolites and bradykinin remains so this will lead to decrease in the blood pressure according to the vasodilation process I hope this makes sense so remember this vasodilation which causes decreased blood pressure so in a nutshell was ACE inhibitors do it works on the two pathways first one is inhibition of inhibitory action of renin angiotensin system which is known as RAS system. and second is stimulating action of the calicrine kinin system which I have already mentioned the pharmacokinetic properties are associated with ACE inhibitors like we are having captopril it has 6 to 12 hour duration so 2 to 3 times can be given and all other ACE inhibitors have duration of action of 12 to 24 hours so can be given once daily next is the indication indication of ACE inhibitors it is given in hypertension congestive heart failure and after myocardial infarction the important point to consider over here is consider the dry uh, side effects of the ACE inhibitors are dry cough hyperkalemia hypotension and angioedema so dry cough it is associated because of increased bradykinin increased bradykinin it is thought to be accumulate into the respiratory frails of the lungs so it causes cough dry cough then we are having hyperkalemia hyperkalemia because of the decreased aldosterone secretions and then we have hypotension this hypotension is associated with lower level of the angiotensin 2 and angiotensin 2 is uh, you know about that is potent vasoconstrictor and angioedema this is because of the leaky blood vessels this is because of leaky blood vessels comes with the bradykinin which causes vasodilation and vasodilation because of the nitric 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 oxide so it leads to leaky blood vessels which causes angioedema so i hope this makes sense this is all about ace inhibitors thank you for watching this video keep subscribing me and comments or email me for the suggestions thank you all of this